Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my What's in the Bag video. I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy at home at the moment. I know I'm a little bit bored and I'm trying to keep really busy by making lots of videos at the moment, making lots of content to help entertain you guys whilst you're at home. Let me know, by the way, as well, what you're missing the most at home. For me, I know I'm missing gym and golf definitely the most. Um, just get out of the house on the golf course. We've had some great weather here in the UK and it's just been taunting me. Ugh. Anyway, let's get to it. So this video is going to be a what's in the bag and why. I'm going to explain not just what's in my golf bag but why it's in there, why it's replaced previous products and yeah, give you guys a little bit more information, a little bit more background and help you choose what might be right for you. Okay, which end of the bag shall we start with? Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Now I've got two putters that I could potentially use. For a while now, I've been using this tailor-made Ardmore 2 TP collection, this really nice bronze finish. It is a really nice putter. I've putted really well with it. It's got these awesome um, alignment aids on the back, so it's pretty easy to aim and get the ball started online. It's got this really nice insert as well that does feel really soft, and to be fair, I've putted pretty well with it. But the putter it replaced, I've had in my bag for years and I really do love it. By the way, shout out to these head covers because I love this one. Got this one at the Open, 147th Open at Carnoustie. Absolutely love that. And also Golf Iconic in America made me some head covers back when my page was MD Golf. And um, yeah, pretty cool Infinity Gauntlet there for you. I'm a pretty big Marvel fan, so. Anyway, the putter it replaced is the Scotty Cameron Futura X5R specific. I know there's quite a few in the Futura collection. It was a really popular collection used by Adam Scott, Charles Howe, loads of really good players out on tour. So I love this putter. Again, it's got really good lineman aids helps you set up nice and square, nice and straight, get the ball started online. It feels amazing off the face, really soft, really consistent roll. Just for me, it sets up really nice and is just a really, really good looking putter. I've also got this huge fat cat grip on there from Superstroke 5.0, I think it's the biggest one they do. Um, that is because I like to grip the putter with my hands at the sides not actually meeting in the middle. Now this is because it gets my elbows more tucked in, whereas if I was to go over like that, normal grip there, my elbows are kind of away from my body a little bit more. If I go there, nice and tucked in, just rock the shoulders, gets the ball started online. Now to be fair, this putter doesn't have the same grip, and to try and do the same grip on it, isn't quite the same effect. It's not doesn't sit in your palms. You have to kind of hold it in your fingers a bit. It's a really nice grip. It's this super stroke grip pistol GTR 1.0 from super stroke and also tailor-made Yeah, I do like both of these. I think I'm gonna actually do a more in-depth video 
maybe some kind of competition between the two, have a little putt off, see which actually makes it into my bag. But this is what's been in my bag for the last few months. It's only recently I'm thinking about going back to the Scotty Cameron. Just because I love it so much. I just miss it. You ever just miss clubs like you just used before and you just find it one day and you're just like, oh yeah, those were the days. Now for those of you who don't know or haven't seen my previous What's in the Bag videos, I'll link them down below so you guys can click on them, check them out, um, see what was in my bag and when it was in it. But for those of you who have seen them, you'll know that I like to carry in my wedges a 58, a 54 and a 50. Just works out well gapping for me. I've had it for a long time. 60 degree wedges tend just to not go anywhere. I just feel like I leave everything short. Anything from like 30 yards and more, it just goes up in the air, spins, and it just comes up short. I don't mind opening up wedges and playing around with that. I've never had a problem with getting the ball up in the air with my wedges, so. But the first of my wedges is pretty special, and it is the newest club in my golf bag, actually. It is this beautiful, now let me see if I can pronounce this, Itabori, Itabori. It's Japanese, it was sent to me by a company called Dragon Golf, shout out to them. Um, I'll put the little link to their Instagram on the page, you can go check them out. They sell a bunch of uh, Japanese handmade golf clubs. Um, across Europe. So this, this wedge is handmade in Japan. The quality is unbelievable. It's probably actually one of my favorite clubs in my bag just because it is beautiful. Have a little look at that. I mean, it is stunning. Just the, the workmanship that goes into these products is incredible. Also, they put a little Mike's 3D Life on there have to love that nice little customization. Even the details of this wedge, just this little hosel, just really beautiful. Um, also the feel of it is insane. It's very different to wedges you would find from like Callaway TaylorMades. Um, it doesn't have that like sweet spot. It's a bit of a deader feel, but it's like really solid across the face. You're gonna get kind of more consistent spin and distances with it, which I really like. And yeah, it just, there's no way that's not making it into my bag. However, the club it did replace, I also did quite like, and it was this 58 degree from TaylorMade in the new high toe, what do they call it? The high toe Bigfoot, or whatever you wanna call it. They also did some nice little personalization for me on there. It does look pretty good. It's a good product. I liked it in some scenarios. I didn't like it so much in others. I didn't feel like I could open up the wedge because if I felt like if I opened it up, you've got this massive chunk on the back and it just sat so high off the floor that I just couldn't get the club kind of underneath it. So it was okay when it was square and coming through and it has a lot of bounce on it. But yeah, it was a, it was a good wedge. I, I definitely prefer my new 58, just much more versatile, open it up, shut the face. Yeah, and also if you view it from the top, the new one is a lot thinner top line. This high toe has quite a thick top line and yeah, I don't know why that is so much. I guess forgiveness probably, but also in the Itabori wedge, I do have it in the Nikon Modus NS Pro Tour 125 extra stiff shaft, which I have to say I really love. It's probably one of my favorite shafts out there and I should really look at getting this shaft throughout throughout my bag. So moving on to my 50 and 54, they're both exactly the same wedge. Uh, I have the TaylorMade Milled Grind 2s in the black finish, which are actually I love. I love a black finish in a wedge. They look so stealth and just so sick. No, no custom stamping on there. Come on, TaylorMade, sort it out. And they've just started to wear a bit on the face, just started to get that rust. They've got that raw face, so they will rust. They're designed to rust, so you get more spin in wet conditions. Really love these wedges. They are soft, but they do have that like pop off the face, which is nice, but you do find that, I just find the distance control a little bit more inconsistent than with mine. Like if I flush one, I can easily see it go like five yards further 
or if I don't strike it quite as well. Yeah, they're really solid wedges. I've got these in a Dynamic Gold S200 shaft. No complaints really with the shaft. I wouldn't say I've loved it. I've had these wedges since August 19, so yeah, I've had them a while now. And they're, they're nice. Yeah, they've been good. They replaced, what did they replace? Oh, uh, these replaced my Callaway, Mil uh, what were they called? Callaway, I can't remember what these replaced. I think it was Callaway wedges. They're probably upstairs. I've got so many golf clubs upstairs, I'm gonna really have to go through them all and show you guys, because it's actually insane. But yeah, good wedges, pretty happy with them for now. May look at doing some reviews and seeing if we can replace them in the near future, but no complaints, no complaints, good product, good quality. Right, so now my irons, and I think these are the my favorite golf clubs in my golf bag at the moment. They are just unbelievable, and you guarantee you probably haven't seen a what's in the bag video before with these irons. They are the Mira MB001 irons, blades, truest blade you could probably find. I mean, that is pretty, pretty thin top line. Why do I have these irons in my bag, you may ask, because they are not the most forgiving golf club, although I don't think they're unforgiving either. They feel unbelievable, and the distance control and spin is so consistent. Now, you guys may be aware there was a rumor that Tiger Woods used mirror irons for a long, long, long time, and that Nike were just kind of putting their stamp on it. And I, I, I think that rumor was probably true. I could definitely see it being true, because Mira, for the longest time, have come out with the highest quality products. I think this is true of a lot of Japanese manufacturers. I'm a massive advocate of Japanese golf clubs, Honma, Mura, every everything I've tested, that Itabori wedge I just showed you, has been really high quality, really impressed me. And to be honest, I've had these for a few years and I haven't used them. I ha I've had other golf clubs in the bag. So first of all, by the way, I haven't cleaned this club. I cleaned all these clubs, but I haven't cleaned this one in particular, so it's a bit muddy. So first of all, I got fitted for the Callaway Apex Pro irons. They are really, really nice. I used these for a long, long time, and I got new irons, and I kept going back to them, and I even got the mirrors, and I kept using these because I loved them so much. And at the time, I probably wasn't as good a ball striker. And I love these irons. They're really good irons. If you, if you want secondhand irons, I would try and get a hold of some of these because they're really old now, they're 16, not 16 years old, 2016. But they're really nice, they have a nice thin top line, they're obviously, they're not a blade, they are a slight cavity back, but they do have a thin top line, they feel really, really nice. I've heard good things about the new ones that replaced these, the new Apex Pros, the 19 version I think it is. And I'm, I've, I've hit them and they feel really nice again and they're good irons. I don't like the look of them. They're all chrome and for me, chrome golf clubs, I would rather have like matte black and matte kind of finished just so they don't chrome just, it's fine when they're new and they're shiny or whatever, but they just, they're gonna dent and ding and you just don't wanna scratch them and you like feel like you have to polish them every two seconds and for those of us who don't have a caddy to do that for us, I think it's it's not really worth it. But anyway, yeah, really good irons. I've got these again in the Nippon Modus NS Pro Tour 120s X Flex. I've loved these shafts. They've been really good. I actually really want to swap these shafts into the mirrors because in the mirrors, I have the Dynamic Gold True Temper. I think they're what is it S300. So they're a stiff shaft, but they're not like, I don't know. They, they're they good. I'm not in love. But anyway, room for improvement. I actually really want to do a shaft fitting. Who would like to see a shaft fitting video? Maybe someone like KBS or someone like that. Go to them and actually, actually get fit for a shaft because my last fitting was pretty bad, honestly. So 
Anyway, after the Callaways, I actually started using these. I got fit for the TaylorMade P760s. And I actually, I really like the look of these irons. When I first saw a picture of them, I did not like, I thought they looked horrendous. But in person, they look great. And they feel really good. They do have quite a big hot spot. So I, I do feel like if I like flushed one with this and flushed one with the mirror, there'd probably be like 15 yards difference. But if I don't catch it with the mirror, it might drop off like five yards. If I don't catch it with this, it could drop off like 15 yards. And it was just too inconsistent. Like just flyers were coming out all over the place, just a distance control. Also, I'm not a massive fan of the shafts. Um, again, the Dynamic Gold S200s, I think. They're okay. I'd, I'd never loved them. I don't know if it's the head or the shaft. It's a good product, but, and it could suit a lot of people. Um, and I think that's what they were made for, honestly. They could they could suit a wide range of handicaps. So if you haven't tried them, do try them. I just prefer the mirrors. I mean, if you look at the top line of both of them, they're just, yeah, they're just, mirrors just sit so much nicer for me. They're more square, more square head profile there. Not really comparable products, but they both have their place. So that's irons, and that's why those are in my bag. Now, let's dive into woods. Before diving into woods, let's actually take a look at the golf ball I use. It is the TaylorMade TP5, boom, right there, uh, TP5. And um, yeah, it's, I've used it for a few years now. I really love it. I could easily use a Titleist Pro-V or a TaylorMade TP5. They're pretty interchangeable balls. Not much difference, but I find this to be a little bit better in the wind and goes a bit further. Good quality ball, you can't really go wrong with it. There's not much else to say. Best players in the world use it. Right. Oh, how cool is this as well? So my parents brought me this. They went to the US Open 2019 at Pebble Beach. I didn't go. So jealous. So jealous. Just a cool, cool towel. Goes in my bag. Some other products I just have in my bag before we get into the woods. I've had this for a long time, Bushnell Rangefinder. Yeah, you can't really go wrong with Bushnell, can you? It's kind of the the name in rangefinders. But yeah, I had it for a long time. This is the, what did they say? The 7X or the X7 Pro Slopes. So it gives you the slope, which you're not allowed to use in competition. But I don't play a huge amount of competitions anyway, so all good there. What rangefinders do you use, by the way? Have you guys ever found one rangefinder to be better than another? This is the only one I've ever owned. So I don't really know a huge amount about them. I've not tested very many be interesting to see. Now, the other thing I have in, in my bag, although again, I haven't actually tested this very much, is the, uh, oh, that way around, the Rapsodo MLM launch monitor thing. It's a cheap version of a launch monitor. I think it's like $500 or pounds or something like that. It, yeah, it's from Rapsodo Golf. It's a cool product. I need to test it more. I've got a new review series coming soon, so might use this out on the golf course to do some testing and stuff. It pops out like that. And I think your phone, your phone, yeah, sits there. You download the app and your phone sits there and it's a little portable little launch monitor. Pretty cool. I'll give you guys some more testing. I might do a review video of it as well. See, see how it is. Maybe compare it to like a TrackMan or a GC Quad, something like that. I mean, it's not gonna be as accurate and it's not gonna give you as much information but it costs like 1 40th of the price or something. Also, shout out to the guys at Moto Caddy for sending me this bag. I really do love it. It's part of their dry series, so it's 100% waterproof. And it's a big bag, but it's it because it's made of this waterproof fabric, it's actually pretty light. Having said that, I have a lot in my bag, so it's actually pretty heavy. But it's a really cool bag. I don't really have a preference in golf bags nowadays. I don't think it matters too much. But that is also because I have quite a lot of golf bags, probably. I need to show you guys some of the golf bags I have, because honestly, I have a lot. And I have some really cool bags. I have this limited edition one. You'd love it. So moving on to woods. I know this is what you guys all want to see. Everyone wants to see what drivers in your bag. Also, how cool are these little custom head covers from McDonald Golf? You guys can see them. I'll uh, put up their little Instagram on the screen so you can guys go check them out. They're in the UK, make some really cool high quality 
leather handmade head covers. Recommend checking them out. They made me uh, one, a three rid cover, driver three rid, little hybrid cover, and also a alignment stick cover. Because you need an alignment stick cover and no one sells them and it's so annoying because your alignment sticks scratch up your golf clubs, they get all up under the head covers, scratch them up, ruined many a driver of mine. It is very irritating. Especially when you get a new driver, then it gets up there. Right, so moving on to woods. Okay, starting off with the hybrid. I go three hybrid. This is in 19 degrees, had to look there. This is the TaylorMade M6 Rescue. Not much to say about this club. I've got it in the hazardous smoke. It's a really nice hybrid. It goes a long way, it goes pretty high too. Just a solid, solid hybrid. I've had a lot of hybrids in my time. This definitely is my favorite of them. You just want a hybrid to do a job, don't you? It's, it's, you don't want it to go like 300, 400 yards. Like, you know what I mean? It's designed to go a distance and to hit fairways. And this does that. So not much more to say about that. So again, in three wood, I have the TaylorMade M6. And again, have it in the hazardous smoke shaft. Um, this one's in 70 grams, the hybrid's in 90. You do typically go up in weight as you go down in clubs. 70 gram hazardous smoke. Now, when I went to the TaylorMade factory last year, I spoke to some of the engineers and the guys there, and they said this was the best three wood like by a long way they've ever come out with. I certainly really like it. It sits really nice. It's really like flat, quite a wide, big head profile. Certainly I tested it against the M5. If you guys haven't seen those fitting videos, I'll put links to them below as well so you guys can check them out of when I was fit for all my kind of tailor-made clubs and stuff. And you can see why I chose these. Uh, the M5, when I was fit was a lot smaller head and just didn't spin as much. I still hit it, a good one was pretty similar to this, maybe a little bit better, a little bit lower spin, but the bad one was bad, like really bad. Whereas this was really forgiving. So I do really like this club. I love hitting stingers as well. And this just is awesome for it. That's probably going to be staying in the bag for a while. Although I am curious about trying out this new uh, TaylorMade Sim products. I've hit some of them before um, when I was in America. But I want to do some fits with those. And I'm going to do some review videos for those soon. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel. It's free to do so you don't miss out on more of those review videos and other content. Like this video if you are enjoying it. Sweet. Now driver, I've gone for the TaylorMade M, this is the M5 isn't it? Yeah, M5. I always get a bit confused with all the TaylorMade M products, especially as you have two different versions of M1 and M2. Do you? Yeah, you do. So this is the TaylorMade M5. I have this in a hazardous smoke 70 gram shaft. I feel like I could get fit into some better shafts. This is kind of the stock shaft. It's a good shaft, but I feel like there would be a better shaft out there for me as I've had to tune with this head a little bit, probably more than I would like to. I've got it set a bit higher, obviously get the ball up in the air, get the dynamic loft to go up a bit. And I've got the weights in this. I've got both of them right at the back for max forgiveness. Because with my driving, I tend to not spin the ball very much anyway. I tend to have pretty low spin. This obviously is going to increase spin a bit, having those weights back, and increase forgiveness as well. And I just want to get the ball launching as high as possible with as little spin as possible. So you get that nice flat kind of flight. There's nothing worse and seeing the ball just fizz and then it just goes up into the air and then it drops out and it's like 150 yards. It's not what you want, especially into wind. And I love Lynx Golf and you need something you can control the spin of and it's consistent. And I do like this driver. It's long, it's consistent, it's got that twist face. All of these have actually got the twist face, the hybrid and the three wood as well. They've got twist face in them obviously as well, but they aren't adjustable. Whereas this one I can tinker around with and play around with whilst I'm making swing changes, which I do love to do. 
I also want to test out some of the new SIM products. Um, I have hit them before. I hit the SIM driver in America earlier this year and it felt great. It sounded great and it looked great and it went. But I'm going to have a lot of review videos, a lot of great content coming to you guys soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's free to do just so you don't miss out on any of the content I'm going to be bringing out. Make sure you stay up to date and if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below, let me know what's in your bag, what clubs you want to see me reviewing. We're going to review all the big brands, all the little brands, anything we possibly can get our hands on and give you guys as much information as possible. So thank you very much for watching this guys and remember in golf and in life, grip it and rip it. I'll see you guys soon.